You ready? So on, so on. Right. This is loading up now. Father, big excuse. And if I say excuse me again, then you hear me get off charge, then you gotta move. Uh -huh. The studio has a 24 track Studer tape machine, 8068, Neve console, the lexicons, you know, a bunch of stuff that's geeky for engineers. They like this stuff, but it's the best sounding room. Come in, buddy. Come in, we're going to play back. A lot of record companies and people's careers were started here. Like, so like Teddy Riley, the Fat Boys, LL Cool J, a lot of artists used to come through here. Onyx, The Mighty Sparrow, Casey, a lot. It's a legacy. This is the last studio left in the entire world, the entire world from the hip hop era. Everybody's out of business. My uncle, Ross St. Charles, had his momentum going. My father ended up going to school for engineering at the Institute of Audio Research, where he eventually sent me and my brother to go to school. He ended up doing a lot of Mariah Carey's groups, uh, 50 Cent. A lot of stuff, so that's why I was so much heavily into the music. My uncle left Trinidad to come here to America because he wanted something better for himself. And he started uh, producing music, using studios that weren't taking minorities. So, you know, you get that spare time, you know, you get the leftover studio time. So. He was making a lot of money off of his record sales, so he built this, a studio from scratch by getting the same people who built the big studios, like Hit Factory and, and Sony, and a guy named Frank Comentelli brought him over here. The studio ended up being in Mix Magazine. Since it was a baby of all the other studios, a lot of the mistakes and things that they had from others were all fixed, so it became the best sounding room in the industry. The studio was built in 84. It was a terrible time for Brooklyn. You used to see a lot of abandoned buildings over here. Crack, uh, drugs were heavy in those days. If you look at this hole here, one of the uh, crackheads came down through the air conditioning duct like it was Mission Impossible and took off with two Neumann microphones. This is what used to happen right here. A lot of artists got robbed <laughs> coming here or leaving here. Everything you hear Biggie and Jay-Z talk about, this neighborhood was that. You will definitely hear about people getting robbed or robbing someone. It was a bad time for New York. A great time for the music. You know, hip hop is people expressing themselves over the stuff that they are going through. Just picture, you got Charlie Stetler from UMTV Raps putting together an album with Ed Lover, Dr. Dre, Mark the 45 King from Wu-Tang, and on the other side, on the mic, Neumann, Biggie. Picture that. The studio is also connected to a five-story building that used to house all the artists that would fly in from different countries and parts of the world just to record here. That's what the building was for, just that. So you could imagine a, a bunch of creatives housing this building, just coming and going and different people in and out. And it was insane. My cousin, Cootie Charles, and I had been rebuilding this studio and that great building next door where it housed all the artists in it. Uh, where you keep the gloves? Thank you, dear. Oh, goodness. 
This has been abandoned 40 years. It was a fire. Once it's inspected, the plans are closed. Then they can start rebuilding in here. I feel our generation owes a huge debt to hip hop. The studio is back in full business again. 